Hi guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. So today's video, we're going to be setting up this beginner tank. This is a Superfish Tropical 30 kit, or the Starks 30 kit, or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a tank if this is your first tank ever. Uh, so yeah, stick around and uh, enjoy the ride. So yes guys, today we're going to be showing you how to set up a beginner tank. So this video is meant for people who have never set up a tropical fish tank before, but want to get into fish keeping. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it. And so today it's going to be the Super Fish Tropical 30 start. That's a kit. It comes with literally everything you need. As you can see, a filter, heater, uh, all different types of things. So yeah, this is a very good just all-in-one kit to start you off with. So let's start by opening the box. All right, so here we are. It's just a little tab here at the, tab, at the back that you just pull out. And you just open it up like so, basically. And well, here we go. The tank is in there already. Let's just take these foam patterns out. Don't need those. And we should be able to just slide the tank out. So there's nothing else in the box. This is just everything. And then we just take this wrap down. All right, guys. So this is literally how the tank comes out of the box. As you can see, just a glass box, really, with all kinds of stuff inside of it, which is really nice. So if we open the lid, you can see there's a light in there. This light comes included. It comes included with everything, basically. Uh, and then you've got a wire here. There should be a power adapter somewhere as well. We'll just put this to the side a minute. Then we see we got a filter in here. So this is just a Aquaflow 50 filter. Perfect little filter for this small little tank. Since this tank is only about 25 to 30 liters, so really not that big. It also comes with a little heater, which you need, of course, for tropical fish. So that's all good. Just a little 50 watt heater. Then this is the power adapter for the light. And it comes with a nice little kit of different starter things. So we've got some Bacto start, so that's some bacteria for your filter. We've got an aqua safe little thing, which is to make your tap water safe for the fish. A little thermometer is in there, a little net as well. And it looks like some food, some fish food as well, which is really nice. And then last but not least, we've got a little manual instruction thingy. So that's really nice, but uh, you won't be needing that because you got this video. So anyway, that's everything that comes inside the kit, which, you know, this is just a full kit that you can just pick up and set up for yourself. And in this video, you'll learn everything about a beginner tank and how to set one up. And it's, yeah, this is just a complete guide to everything. So anyway, let's get started. So we're going to start off with actually just rinsing out the tank because you can maybe see, but in the bottom here, are some leftovers from the manufacturing and you don't want those things in your tank uh, water of course so there's like a bit of uh, styrofoam in there and just some things so you're just gonna wash this with normal water just tap water nothing special no soaps don't do that just some tap water rinse it out and you're good to go right so there we go my tank is now fully cleaned uh, as you can see, I just rinsed it with a little bit of water. That's all you need, really. And then it's just nice and clean because sometimes from the manufacturer and there's still some residues left on the glass and you don't want to use that. You know, it might be some chemicals or whatever. So just rinse it out. Also, this is also the point where you can leak test it. You know, sometimes it happens that there's a little um, a malfunction in the fabrication of the tanks and that they leak. Uh, if this is so, usually within guarantee period you can just swap it out for a new tank and that should be totally fine but definitely make sure it doesn't leak because otherwise you know it can be a disaster right so next step would be to actually start getting your decorations and things in and that's the step now so you can do different things you can have a substrate layer of like sand or gravel or if you want to take it professionally even aqua soil i would recommend if this is your first tank to maybe do some sand or gravel aqua soil is a bit more advanced i would say start with a sand or gravel substrate you can do whatever type you like um, there's so many different types and colors and things available so just choose what you want. As for decorations, you can go the natural way with real wood and real stones, with real plants, or you can go for like the fake root with like fake ornaments and things like that. It's 
basically what you prefer and what you want to do. Totally up to you, Nobody, there's no right or wrong basically. Um, but I would recommend getting some live plants. Since live plants are really good for your ecosystem and how that works I'll maybe explain in a, a later video or whatever. Um, speaking about like the nitrogen cycle, that's a whole other topic but it is important to know when you're keeping fish. Anyway for now we're just going to start off with scaping this tank. I've got a bit of experience doing these things you see and this tank is for a client of mine so I'm going to make it look pretty good and pretty natural because uh, I think that's kind of what they're looking for. So uh, yeah, we'll just start off with doing that. So for the base of the tank, I've just got some really simple gravel here. Um, yeah, this is just some lighter colored gravel will work really well. And I've also got some bigger gravel. This is just some leftovers I had. And when I'm building a tank for somebody, I can use whatever I've got. So that's pretty nice. Um, for you, you probably have to get the bags yourself. So take a look at, you need to look how much you need of everything. Um, but I've got the privilege of having so much stuff, basically my own shop, so I can basically shop in my own shop. Do you want to rinse your substrate out, so your sand or your gravel, rinse it out because there can be a bit of dust and things in it and it's just better to rinse that out than having like a cloudy tank. So I'll do that real quick, I'll show you how to do it, it's really not that difficult and then you maybe can do it yourself at home. So what I recommend you do is grab some kind of container or bucket, it's whatever you want and depending on how big the tank is, you're setting up of course. Then get your gravel or sand and pour a bit in. And you don't want to do too much at once, so I'd say about this is good because otherwise it's just going to make it more difficult and the process is going to be longer. Anyway, then you just fill this with water. And you can see already this mucky water that comes out of it. Like, yeah, you just don't want this in your tank, you see. And so this cloudiness and dust and stuff, we can just rinse off now by literally just pouring it back out. And then you repeat this process for as much you need until the water is kind of clear. You'll never get it really clear, so kind of clear, uh, then you're totally fine. And so yeah, repeat that process and then you can fill up the bottom of your tank. Right, so now we should be at a level where it's kind of clear. So rinse it about four or five times. And as you can see, now I fill it up and the water is, you know, pretty clear. You Like you can see into it, you can see the bottom, so that's pretty good. So... Yeah, that's that's all you need to do really. Right, so now we're back at the tank and we're simply just gonna take our gravel and just pour a bit of it in. So, you know, just cover the bottom. Um, you want about, eventually about, I would say about three to five centimeters. I would say around five centimeters is good, which is about, what, two inches or something. Um, so that should be good. Uh, so I'm just going to do that until I think we have a good enough layer. Right, and so here's a pro tip for you. Um, so when you're putting in your substrate, make sure to, at the front, make it lower and at the back, make it higher. I've done it here and as you can see, it creates a deeper effect. So it looks like the tank is way deeper than it actually is and this will be... Yeah, really nice because it, it looks like your tank is bigger than it actually is. Just really simple to do at the front, a uh, thinner layer, at the back, a thicker layer. I think this is about decent here, as you can see maybe from the side. Yeah, as you can see from the side, so I've done a, a smaller layer here and then a bigger layer there. It's about five, six centimeters there and about three centimeters here, which will make, uh, you know, this will be good for planting. And if need be, we can always add more substrate later, of course, but this is just the base layer. So with the substrate in, it's now time for your hardscape or decorations. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you know, put a little SpongeBob house in there if you really wanted to with a SpongeBob figure. Um, but we are gonna go for the natural method. So we're gonna get maybe some rocks and some wood. And yeah, just let's see if we can make something really nice and natural. Right, okay guys, so we've had a little break and I've also been busy working on this tank a little bit. I've also moved it, just uh, this is probably the spot where I'll have it running for like a week or two weeks before we move it to the client's house. Um, just to get it cycling already and ready for fish basically. Um, so basically what I've done is really simple, I've just taken one of my pieces of wood with Anubis already attached onto it. So these are pieces that I sell myself. I thought this was a quite a nice piece and it already got the plants attached on it, supported it by some uh, rocks there. So that's just as support. 
But I think this is just a good base, you know. Um, I don't think we'll need much more than this because we're going to have plants all the way in the back there. And you want some space for the fish to swim, of course, you know. So I think this is pretty good. So I've also turned the light on, which yeah, is up there. It looks really good, you know. Uh, lights up the tank like perfectly, if you ask me. Uh, so yeah, we're going to just move on with planting now. So we're going to choose some plants and then plant them in. Right, so as for plants, you'll have to choose yourself in a shop, of course. But I've got a huge selection here of plants that I can choose from. And I'm just going to show you a couple of types of plants that will work well. And explain a little bit what the difference is in the plants. Alright guys, so this is the selection of plants that I'll be using for this tank. Uh, these are nine pots in total. For your tank, you won't need this much, I don't think. Uh, you just really need to have a look. You know, you don't have to start off with too many plants. I would say for this tank, maybe uh, five pots would be enough, to be honest. But I like to plant heavily from the start, and I'm able to do that. So let's do that. So I'm just going to show you how to, you know, uh, use these plants. But I'll also tell you a little bit about the plants. So you've got a few different types of plants. So starting down here... These are like foreground slash uh, like grassy plants. So these will be in the front of your tank. Same like this one. Well, this is actually like a grass here. Um, then you've got stem plants, which are in the middle here. These are just, uh, yeah, stem, like a stem plant, you know. So it's got a stem and then it just grows like that. These are just really simple and easy to grow. And I recommend these if you are starting out. And you've got them in green and in like red as well. Although I would stay from away from the red for the start because red is a little bit more tricky with, you know, you want then higher lighting and CO2. But we're not going to get into that because that's too complicated for a beginner. And then also here you've got, so these are cryptocorines and these are like a rosette plant. So it grows from the middle there and... Yeah, that works really well. And then the plant that's already in here is an Anubius, and that's an epiphyte plant, which means that it needs to be attached to like something like some kind of decoration, so some rock or wood. That can't be planted in the substrate, so keep that in mind, because it just grows there at the rhizome and the, uh, you know, the shoots come out of the side. And yeah, then it just attaches to whatever it's growing on. Anyway, so to prepare one of these plants is really simple. All you're going to do, well, this is the name tag, take that out, of course. Then you want to take this out of the pot, just like so. And then you want to take this stuff, this is rock wool, you want to take that off, you don't want that in your tank. And usually the pan plant comes in multiple pieces. So you can see we've got like three sections here. So just take all of that rock wool off because you don't want that in the tank. You can even use like a fork or something to take it off because that does work really well. Or just your fingers of course. Anyway, so something like this is fine, you know, there can be a little bit left over. That's not a big issue really. And then this is ready to plant. So I'm going to do that with all these pots here, and then we'll get into planting them in the tank. Alright, it's time to start planting this bad boy. So, there's multiple ways of planting your plants. Uh, you can use uh, your, like, tweezers, so you can buy these. Um, or you can just use your hands, of course. I think we'll start at the back with planting, because I've got some things already ready. Some stem plants, so let's start with those. And I'm just going to show you real quick how to do like some simple stems and then I'll just you know do it all in one go because it's quite boring process um, so yeah so basically you're gonna just grab it here put it in between your tweezers and then you're just gonna look where you want to plant it keep in mind we need some space still for the filter and the heater I think we'll keep those on that side there and then we'll fill in this side more so I'm just gonna plant this somewhere behind the wood So I think somewhere there should be good. Now I've got another few pieces of course, so we'll just take those as well and plant them next to it. We've got a longer piece here, which we might can snap in like in two pieces. You see that's very long as already, so you can just snap a piece off just by snapping it here. And then you can replant this. That's the nice thing about stem plants. Just snap it off, replant it, and it'll grow further. Right, so there we go. I'm going to continue this process now. And then I'll get back to you once we're done. All right, guys. I think we've finished planting now. It looks really good, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, got a lot of plants in here. Like I said, you don't need to start with this many plants. They'll grow for you. Um, but we're just starting here with a nice amount of plants. So that's just going to grow in nicely. I've got some grasses here in the front. Some stem plants in the back. 
the crypt is right there in the back as well and then the Anubis on the wood of course uh, so yeah now next step is of course to fill the tank up and to add the filter and heater in so let's start by filling up the tank now as with anything there is a way of doing this uh, best way is to just get start with like a little jug like this and slowly fill it up so I'll show you how I would do it so just with your hand like this slowly fill it up to not disturb the substrate just really take your time with this step right there we go guys we're fully filled up now as you can see everything's looking really good so you know everything is a bit misty and bubbly right now totally normal so just let this be um, plants need to adjust and everything they are gonna look a bit wonky as you can see but give it a day and they'll straighten out and looks amazing so now it's time just to add the filter and the heater in I'll show you how to do that and then we're basically done right so here we go real simple really it's just in a box here and we just open this box and then you can find some of the parts and also the actual filter itself and the little instruction manual but we don't need that because you got me of course anyway very simple take this out here's your filter basically a tiny little thing it is really and a little plug and then in here you've basically got your filter media it's just a little sponge that's all uh, which is perfectly fine so just slide that back in there and then you've got your little pump so this is the pump put that on top and then you're pretty much good to go now you could leave it like this but it comes with like a spray bar here which is very nice and it makes sense to use this so let me just show you so it just comes with this this you put in here then there's a little end cap as well put that on the end of the spray bar oh sorry i did it the wrong way around you need this one on here i mean it's pretty self-explanatory -explan there's only one way to do it put that in there see and then just put that on there and then you're good to go see because this is just a little regulator of how hard the flow should go so that's all good anyway that's your little filter so we can just put that in there all right so we just got that in the back there as you can see uh just in the corner really easy uh and then next to that will come the heater so this heater is also in a little box just like this uh, let's see if we can open it up one-handed yes we can and let's see what's in there this is just a little 50 watt heater let's see if we can get the heater out of it actually yep there we go little instructions and stuff uh, but here it is tiny little thing and we'll just put that in as well right everything is set to go last thing now is just to turn everything on right so there we go i got the filter and heater on as you can see there's an on button on there and the filter is blowing as you can see there uh yeah looking really good we're just gonna leave this settle for well at least a couple of days and i'll just give you an update in yeah maybe a couple of days actually before i leave you we are gonna add our beneficial bacteria and our aqua start in basically aqua start is that it makes your tap water suitable for fish now here in the netherlands we don't really need to use this because there's no chlorines and chloramines in our water but in many parts of the world there are chlorines and chloramines in the tap water so you want to use some kind of dechlorinator which this is and this is just a back to start so there's some bacteria for you know your aquarium filter so put a bit of this in so it can start colonizing in your filter so we'll do that and just follow the directions on the bottle of course it comes with it so why not use it and uh, yeah so i'll do that and then i'll catch up with you guys in a couple of days all right guys it's now one day late and as you can see we are cleared up really well already like there's no bubbles left on the glass anymore and overall the tanks looking pretty clear there's a little hit mistiness in the water but that's totally normal you can see now as well the plants are standing upright which is looking really good and you know now it's just time to let this cycle and run so keep adding that bacteria in you know this little bottle keep adding that stuff in and then you should be good to go now you want to wait until i would say at least a week maybe even two weeks until your tank is fully cycled best way to know when it's ready is to take a little sample of water take it to your local fish store and usually they can test your water for free or buy a test kit yourself but usually most fish stores will test it for free for you and then they'll tell you if your water is good for fish or not but anyway so i'm gonna you know leave this running for a couple of weeks now i probably make a follow-up video where we place it in the client's home and stuff 
and also add the fishing because there's a ton of information I can tell you about that as well so I think this will be part one and then we'll make a part two as well but for now this is it right so anyway guys that's gonna be it for today's video of course, a big thanks to our channel sponsor, Kings Aquariums and Antworld. Their links are all down below. And if you want to help support the channel, consider becoming a member. Uh, links is down below. You get exclusive perks and content. And if you found this video useful, uh, you know, definitely subscribe down below as I can teach you a lot more about fish and aquariums. Since I have quite a few tanks myself. Also, if you're in the Netherlands and you want to buy some fish or plants, uh, check out my website down below. Uh, you can go there and buy them. But anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe, of course. I'll leave a video here, hopefully the follow-up video once that is out. But if it's not out yet, there'll be some kind of different video. Go watch that next, and I'll see you guys next time.